And with that, I think the stream is ready to rock and roll. So, let me just play some chess. Let's play some real chess. Uh, like, how about this? And let's filter it to uh, 1600. All right, here we go. Do I have anything? Yeah, you know, let's close this window. Anything else that needs to be closed? No, it all looks good. All right, so I've lost to this particular opening more times than I'm comfortable admitting. Um, uh, this time I play 3d5. Hopefully that'll be enough to keep me out of trouble this game. To stop any pins on the e file, I'm playing bishop e7. Um, clearly he's intending to take the e-pawn anyway, so I think to stop that, it's safe for me to play queen d6. I have two pieces defending this. The alternative is bishop g4, h3, and I'm kind of forced to take the knight and queen takes and now d5's under attack. Not so comfortable about that, but developing the queen is another piece that gets added to my both attack and defense. So that can't be too bad. Castle out of this. I predict knight c3 or knight d2. Likely knight d2, f1, g3, and then. Or even knight e4. So that's probably what's in store here. Um. Knight e4 is only bothersome if my knight's kind of hanging. Like, this bishop d... bishop takes knight threat is just something I have to constantly calculate and worry about. There are lines where black just plays knight b6, white plays bishop b3, and they have a5, a4. But I don't think that does anything for black. Whereas I think taking this bishop would give me something. Maybe even knight f4 is also giving me something. Um, what it would give me is the ability to play bishop e6 and contest this really pesky bishop outside the pawn chain. Whereas if I take e3, I'm just accelerating white's development. I don't like that. But knight f4, uh, is there anything to worry about? Maybe g3 and then I play knight e6, and that way I dominate the d4 square. This doesn't look bad. There's no checks and traps and things, so yeah, let's play this. I'm actually kind of curious uh, what I'm playing right and wrong here. Uh, let's just play this bit. There we go. Save the layout again. Um, yeah, so as predicted, or as advertised, we see 94. I didn't think this was so strong, because now I just play queen g6. Uh, I'm sure this knight on e4 is annoying, uh, but what's it going to do? My bishop dominates every square it could move to. And even if it does move to c5, um, from there my bishop, my other bishop dominates it. So this knight f4 giving me the ability to play a piece to e6 uh, I think is pretty cool. And now he's got to take a tempo to do something about this threat. All right, that's definitely doing something about the threat. But I could renew the threat with bishop h3. Really, all I want to do is just develop my pieces in peace. I could do bishop h3 or bishop g4. Do you have any discoveries that could be... Like, if I do bishop h3, he's got knight h4. Oh, wait, but then I have bishop takes knight. Um, yeah, I'm undecided which of the two moves is better. But both of them develop my bishop. 
Bishop h3, what can he do? Like, normally there's some kind of attack or counterattack or something that just completely upsets the position. But here I think Bishop h3 forces g3. Uh, and if it does, then white's in a world of hurt. Kind of surprised, but okay. So g3 was forced there. At least I think it was. I'm not entirely 100% positive, but... This means one less defender of the knight on f3. So I could pile up on this now. Yeah, there's no hurry for me to take g3, by the way. No hurry at all. So now I'm threatening like knight e5, knight d4, queen h5, all kinds of fun moves. Or just take the knight. That's legal too. Alright, well let's take another knight. I think I've run out of knights to take. Okay. Do I want to defend this? Like, I want to play bishop f6. But then the whole queen side I have hangs, and he's got four passed pawns. It would be a little bit overwhelming. So, deference to that, I play bishop d6 instead. Likely he's playing queen h4 here. He wants to try to checkmate me with his bishop and two pieces. I have lots of things developed, and I can kind of stop that. Um, fork. The more pieces we trade, the better my position gets. Bishop on c4 is quite annoying, so trading for it uh, greatly benefits me. Yeah, if rook takes, you got rook e8. Pawn takes, you just play like b6 or something. Develop both rooks. Now you ask why this rook to e8? Well, the reason is because this rook's going to get on an open file very soon. Very soon. Go ahead, take my pawns, see if I care. I'm willing to risk losing two pawns just for a chance to strike at this king. Uh, this is absolutely impulsive on my part. Uh, objectively, it may not be best, but in the context of a blitz game, this is likely to produce results. It might even be objectively best for all I know. Like if he had taken queen takes a7 and I take on g3 and I start bringing my rooks to the second rank and sack on g3, that can't be bad. So, he wants to pin me down. Oh wait, if I play that, he plays queen f3. So to deny him queen f3, I've got to play uh, f takes g right now. An alternative would have been just play f3 and then try to maneuver my queen to g2, but that generally uh, only works in exceptional circumstances. Okay, do I have rook f2 here? Does rook f2 mate? Rook f2, king f2, queen g3... King f1, rook f8, king e2, rook f2. Uh, yeah, that mates. Right? Rook f2, king f2, queen g3, king f1, rook f8, king e2. Yeah, this all mates, so I can do that. 
Hey, Beats. Welcome. The point here is that if he takes f2, I've got queen g3, and if he doesn't take f2, I'm still threatening queen g3. Uh, this is kind of a big threat. Because I'm, um, I have three pieces remain, after he takes the rook, I still have three pieces going after the king, and he's got nothing defending it. He's got, like, the queen that's kind of sort of halfway defending it, but that's about it. So king f1 is forced. Well, I'm running a program where I communicate with my audience, so I, I don't have any fear about competing with people right here. I mean, sure, there are some, some higher rated players who do stream, but I'm communicating with, or I'm um, trying to attract a different audience than they are. All right. Play another king pawn. Knight f3. Open Sicilian. Please don't play the Nidorf. The Nidorf's not cool. Knight f6. All right. Well, we're going to get a weird... Oh, we're actually going to get a mainline dragon. This is awesome. Dude. I am so bummed he played a6 and he didn't go for d5. Alright. Well, I'm going to play king b1. That's a subtle trap. Every Sicilian player should know this trap. And my opponent doesn't. So, the point here is that I can win a pawn on e7. Actually, well, yeah. I thought I had f3 hanging. No matter. I still have the trap. Uh, wait. Wait a second. Hold on there. Got queen d8. I have no intermediate tricky business here. Um, that said, my attack is just way faster here, so I should probably still go for it. So, if I play knight d5, he's going to play queen d8. I have no tricky moves. This is disappointing. So, I just have to go for a mate. Okay. That was defending the c6 square. Go over this in a second, but um, Black has lost two tempi on the main line. So playing the Sicilian down two tempi, especially the dragon, doesn't tend to work. Um, it appears my opponent has chosen an interesting gambit. Okay. Uh, okay, so we'll go over to the game after I give them one rematch. Uh, the chat gets deleted when you type things into the chat that shouldn't be there. That's, um, that's not a glitch. That's by design. Doing what it's supposed to be doing. We have d4 here. I personally like to play f5 in this position, but I'm not sure that that's accurate. I'm almost certain it's inaccurate. 
But what is accurate here? Um, maybe just bishop e6. I can continue development. Uh, I could also try to threaten this pawn multiple times, like knight f5, bishop f6, forcing him to play c3, but he wants to play c3 anyway. Um, yeah, I I was a bit... Um, there's That's called a euphemism, when you say something and it means something um, with a much darker intent. Like, when I said he plays an interesting gambit, I am attributing to him that he did that on purpose. Which, based on his resignation, he wasn't even trying, is the insinuation there. Alright, so, we got this knight that moves twice in the opening. That's great. Knight's actually intending to go to e5, unless I, like, attack e5 multiple times here. Um, what do I do? Stopping knight e5 is kind of out of my realm, isn't it? Like, if I play rook e8, this is still a good developing move, so I'm going to do it. Alright, well, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Have a happy new year, merry Kwanzaa, whatever. And I'll see you around. Okay. <sighs> so to continue development. Hey Zush. I oh, I'm just hanging upon. I guess that's how I welcome people to the stream as I hang material. So welcome. Um, but no, that wasn't a long that was a long time coming. I was probably gonna hang something sooner or later. And it's okay if my opponent doesn't want to take it. Um, do I want to trade my bishop for this knight? I think this can't be bad for me. If he does pawn takes, that's an incredibly terrible bishop for him. If he does bishop takes, I just pin the bishop. Okay. Now we liquidate into an equal endgame. Um. I could maybe play knight e4. Knight e4 is interesting. Sets up a dual threat of knight d2 and knight takes bishop. He's, cap he's forced to play bishop f4. Then I play g5 and he's forced to move the bishop yet again. I kind of like this tactical play thing that's going on. Plus, I'm down two minutes, so this will give him something to spend a little time thinking about. I mean, he does, like, bother this game to start looking at tactics. You know, like, after last game and him messing that up, maybe he wants to put in some more effort. Um, but maybe not. G5, this bishop has to go back. Now I have to choose. Like, okay, so no, king f7 is kind of forced. King f7 is kind of a good idea here. Now my knight goes back. Sure, he's lured my pawn onto a dark square. Whoop de doo. I still think that this pawn on d4 means that he's going to have some complications trying to play this. Um. I could play knight c4, bishop c1, and I could take f4. Kind of weird. Play knight f5, he has to 
something about the threat to the bishop. My king kind of invades quickly, but... Or I could play g4. There's nothing compelling any captures here. Oh man. This is where things get interesting. So now I could play f5 and anchor my knight on e4. And what's he going to do? I can't believe I saw g4. Like, that's a positional move in a tactical position. That's kind of impressive. So, now I've barricaded on these light squares, and I can play f5, and my knight's actually kind of happy where it is, stopping a c4 advance. I could do that. That's legal. Plant the knight on e4. I want to say that this is winning, but like I have an extremely good feeling about this position. I don't know how to evaluate it. Obviously, with my with this, no, he's not going to end up taking this pawn. Um, yeah, now I just play f5. Although I didn't have time to figure this out, but maybe the idea of king g6, king f5 would be good. Didn't have time to look at that. But um, yeah, now my knight is really strong there. Now if I could stop him from playing c4, so much the better. A knight actually doesn't do much other than threaten tactics on this square. So if I could figure out... Oh, okay. This um, might simplify things for me. Because now my rook can defend the a-pawn. If he takes, I take back with the c-pawn. Actually, no, taking with the c-pawn is not so great. So I take with the a-pawn. Uh, I don't know. I can't give him the open file. Yeah, if it takes, I have to take this way, and then he plays d5. Not clear. Not clear. Let's apply pressure. Let's open up the e-file again and apply pressure on the bishop. And if he takes, I guess I play knight c4. No. No, because trading everything leads to a difficult endgame. Um... Okay, so I'm going to undouble my pawns. Apply pressure to both the bishop and the b2 square. I could trade down and get the outside passer. I don't have time to think. Oh, I have to play a5. A5 is kind of necessary. I'm not sure how much time I have to achieve it. Um, okay, so... There's a5. That's the outside pass pawn. Play like h4 and g3 in some combination. Um. Hmm. I don't know how to play this accurately. 
I'm going to shuffle a little bit, even though that makes me very uncomfortable. Um, maybe I had to take that. Okay. This is problematic, so I have to go into this. Yeah, so the only shot I have here is if he's not paying attention. I'm going to see if I can catch him off. Uh, well, if he's going to go back and forth, if he's, yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's my bad. I need to learn this endgame. But as much um, grief as I give everybody else for not knowing their endgames, um, and as much as I say it's important to know them so that when your time's low, you should be able to play them accurately. Here I had like 10 seconds left. If I had another 20 or so seconds, there's no question I would have won this. But um, I have to figure this out. Yeah, I had to play A5 as soon as possible. I did play it in a timely enough manner that should still be winning. Um, but... Um, yeah, here's where I kind of faltered. Actually, this might not be winning. Um, the point is that if he gets a protected past pawn, then there's nothing I can do. So, yeah, this is in fact equal until d5, where I felt I might have had something. I played king d6. No, king d6 is not the best. Take d5. Oh, because double B pawns cannot protect each other. That's the point. So, yeah, what I had evaluated here, uh, this is what I evaluated, and I somehow thought that these two pawns were connected. Like, maybe this B pawn were on A4 or something. I don't know. I, I thought these were connected pawns, and therefore this would not be winning. So, yeah, I, this is where I missed the last shot. Admittedly, D5 as a blunder, and I blundered right back, and he blundered again, and he takes c4 as winning. Now, I wonder, the, the move I saw after I played, after I played c5 and saw that, oh no, I had drawn this because there's no way I can take the d-pawn. Uh, no, taking d5 is inaccurate also. See, so, yeah, taking c4 is the only winning move here. Um, and the point is... Pawn takes... Well, he's not going to do king takes, is he? Are we going to... Oh, okay. The point for those unfamiliar with this is that um, all these pawns liquidate, and this is what's called the outside pass pawn. So, in this position, he's got to stop my pawn, and then my king can go and take all the rest of his pawns. So, that's kind of how I expected things to go. Um, but going back a little further, okay, so after we traded, um, c4, I kind of had to play c6 here, so that's fine. King d3. So, could I have played a5 immediately? This is something I thought I had to do, and um, when I played king d6, I thought, surely I'd miss this great opportunity. Um... But, yeah, I guess unless he plays pawn d5, or unless he plays pawn c5, this is still just drawish. So he plays like king c3, king d3, king c3, and neither of us can really break this impasse. Um, 
could even make some pawn moves over here if you wanted to, but there's like nothing to do. And the moment that white plays d... F oh, well of course I shouldn't walk into this. Um, actually, this might not be so bad. If I take here and he takes there, that pawn's not promoting. And his king cannot take my a-pawn. Let's take a look at this. Um, wait. No, he's not playing that move. He's going to play this. Yeah, okay, so I shouldn't allow this d5 check business. But as long as I'm, like, not careless... Uh, in fact, yeah, maybe, maybe that's why. I play a5, he just plays d5. Um... Maybe I dodged a bullet. This this is what I was most afraid of, and maybe this is an actual threat in the position. Uh, so I can't take this, because if I take that, we get to this position, and he's got the opposition, and my pawn's not promoting. So I can't take d5, so my only option is king d6. Um, but... As we saw earlier, if king d6, there's just nothing here for black, because we transpose back into this thing. So, yeah, my move king d6 actually preserved some winning chances if my opponent slips up. Yeah, okay, so... I'm not following exactly on the move number thing, especially because I added lots of variations, and now I'm looking over the chat, and now I see your comment. Um, CB, CB, King, D2. All right. So where was my CB, CB variation? Here we got that. Wait, now here we have one CB. Um, you must be talking about, like, the main line or something. Like this C, no. Uh, where's the CB, CB? Uh, maybe this one. Maybe this is what you were talking about. Um, that's a CD, CB. Um, oh, King D7, yes. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I... That's the point I was trying to raise, is that um, in this variation that I thought was drawish, it's totally fine as long as I don't walk into, like, king e6 here. Like, king e6 is bad. King d7 is probably fine. And, like, there's no breaking this impasse, is the point. As long as I don't do something silly and allow something like this. Maybe not this particular position, but in general... Yeah, king d7 is better than king e6. Yeah, twitch delay can be kind of awful. You're probably referring to a somewhat different position where there's a different tactic at play here, but I agree that um, e6 is not a good square. King d7 is a better square. And there's probably some tactic in some other variation where king d7 actually preserve some winning chances, but having gone through all these variations and sub-variations here, I conclude that King D6 actually preserves winning chances as well, if not better, than A5 did. Just practically speaking, because unless White finds a move like uh, Pawn B4 to stop A5, I'm going to get A5 in anyway. So, yeah, King D6 against a human really preserves winning chances. Um, as long as I don't go king e6, and as long as I keep shuffling king d6, king d7, then this really preserves as many chances as possible. Um, so I'll sit here for a second, see if there's any more comments about this particular endgame. But I conclude that um, I, until he played this blunder d5, I did not have winning chances. And when he did play this blunder d5, I twice missed opportunities to take advantage of it. Um, so I guess shame on me for that one.
I will say that at least I managed to salvage a draw, because that could have really gone south. Okay, so I don't see any additional comments. I think it was instructive that both d5 and c5, by the way, um, this will allow my king all the way over to... Well, let me show it. So king d3, king here, king here, king here. And now I play a4. So the point is that um, c5 would be bad because unless he can get this move in, maybe in this position he can, but I don't think so. Um, unless he can do all that and have it somehow work for him, um, I get a passed pawn first. So, yeah. These pawns uh, sitting adjacent to each other are very strong, but the instant either one of them advances, this entire thing collapses. Hey, Ornikar, how's it going? Uh, it's just learning a pawn endgame here. Uh, so, the way the game proceeded was h4, king c7, d5. My opponent made this huge blunder. I played an okay-ish move. Well, no, I guess this actually is enough of a blunder to equalize the position again. Um... I guess the best move here was d takes c6, and no further evaluation. I guess that's because it's just obviously drawn or something. Interesting. Um, huh, now that's an interesting proposition. So, being featured, I, I read about this. I read that being featured means that when you put lihs.org in your stream title, it gets highlighted up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, I'll definitely think about that and get back to you on it, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly in any event. It could be very interesting. I, I have to think a little bit about that. Sounds good, but um, I'm always one who thinks about things before I do them. <laughs> um, So, oh, cool. Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for doing that. Very good. <laughs> so let me go back to the other game that I, I was looking at. I don't want to dwell on that point too much. It sounds interesting. I'll come back to it at some point. I'll think about it. Let me go back to that other game I promised I wanted to analyze. So the only reason I didn't analyze this earlier is because um, my opponent requested a rematch immediately. Um, so... Okay, we're looking at this, what, okay, oh by the way, um, so you might have missed a game earlier today, there, Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura were playing some blitz chess in a very publicized manner, um, their game proceeded deep, and I played this line before by the way, their line proceeded d5, E takes D, knight takes D, knight takes D, pawn takes, uh, knight takes, pawn takes, queen D5, queen C7. And I've played this as white in a tournament game, and um, this was, I think, about 10 years ago. 10? Yeah, that's, yeah, about 10. And here... I was kind of out of my element. In fact, back here, like when I saw uh, my opponent play d5, I was like, whoa, this is something new. Uh, I was very much taken aback, not understanding what was going on here. So, but in the heat of the moment, I came up with this combination that I take a pawn, I take the knight, I take that, and I'm winning a pawn. And then I'm like, oh... But wait, so I'm up a pawn, um, and I figured all looks well here. 
However, this threat of like bishop f5 and queen takes on c2 looks really nasty. So unless I managed to trade a lot of pieces, um, I felt like I was under a lot of pressure here. And I was looking and seeing that moves like bishop d3, for example, um, I'm still under tons of pressure after rook b8, and his bishop's hacking at this b2 square, and uh, it was just really terrifying, I guess. So uh, so in the heat of that tournament, I played uh, queen takes rook, and uh, took the other rooks. I got both rooks for my queen. Um, but the story didn't end there. I ultimately, uh, like, look at this. Black's got both bishops and the queen going after the king. Um, if white plays bishop d3 to stop the mate, there's queen e5, and b2 is attacked, and the bishop's attacked. So, uh, by the time I got here, uh, I forget. I managed to barely salvage this, but it was pretty terrifying. So this is my first experience with the whole uh, 9d5 here. Uh, anyway, the point I wanted to raise is that this line of the dragon is like very, uh, I don't know, it's very sharp, <laughs> even for a dragon. Um, so he yeah, had 9 castle. I was kind of expecting this d5. And you could go check out this So Nakamura game that occurred today. It actually did proceed. Knight takes, 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 takes. Uh, queen takes and queen c7. Um, and you could take a look at this. This, I've spent an hour or two just studying this particular position. Because uh, this is pretty key to this entire variation. Uh, and what makes this variation different is that the mainline dragon you play bishop c4. And after some moves, this bishop goes to b3, this knight ends up, like, basically, this knight ends up on c4, and then the bishop takes it. So we have bishop c4, bishop b3, bishop takes c4. Uh, happens in the main line dragon. I just chose that I'm not going to move this bishop. I'm going to try to save some tempi, such that when black does play his knight to c4, I can take it and have an extra tempo or two. Um, a6 is not critical. I was really not worried about it. Um, and I kind of expected that black would just play knight e5, knight c4. I would take it, and I'd be up my normal 2, 3, whatever tempi on the dragon. Um, hey, welcome, Matt. How's it going? Well, no, this, is, this isn't a fisher. Like... The Fisher variations are the ones where you actually play bishop c4 in spite of black playing e6 or something. Um, now this is just a dragon where white castles on move 9. This, um, I've played this in over the board tournaments with a 100% win rate, um, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I've played it against some kind of I don't know, players that are like 100 to 200 points rated below me, but uh, to come up with a 100% win rate is pretty crazy. So, um, it really is this strong unless black plays d5. And this is where things get really theoretical, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way for this to work, ultimately abandoning it. But, um... Oh, the bishop c4 line. Um, you know, I think Fisher played this a lot. I think you're right that this can be attributed to Fisher because uh, he played some really sharp opening lines. Um, in particular with bishop c4. And in particular with a lot of kingside sacks. So this might be considered to be a Fisher variation, but yeah, this is what I chose here. Um, and after g4, after a6, g4, I'm just almost completely winning this. If not completely winning. Um, 
And for whatever reason, I panicked here and thought my f pawn was hanging. Uh, can I play knight d5 right away? Well, there's no advantage to that, so I should just play h4. The point is that in like a normal dragon, you'll see bishop d7, h5, rook c8. Um, you know, I forget how this goes. I think, I think bishop h6. And then knight here. And so instead of the bishop having gone to c4 and then to b3 and then to take on c4, you just take this right here. So you've saved two tempi over the mainline dragon. Um, and that's two tempi that pretty much win the game every time. Um, you know, I used to... Uh, we'll get back to the Trompowski in a minute. So I want to get to this here. No, that, that's, Trompowski's interesting, too. Um, so, here I was considering doing knight d5, queen d8, and I can't do knight c6 because this knight is here. Um, maybe that, I don't know. But I figured h4 isn't bad. Here we do see knight c4 after all. Usually this is done after the rook is on the c file, so the rook can take c3 and open up the king and do lots of fun stuff. But anyway, uh, oh, I think this is what I wanted to point out. Okay, this is the point. I've gone through several tangents, and i finally gotten to my point, is that I wanted to play knight c6, and knight c6 wins the e-pawn. So, sorry for that digression, but the point is that I had this knight move, and instead of just hanging his queen, I could have won a pawn. Okay, so that was quite a digression. Um, now you're asking about the Trompowski. So let me set that up here. Oh, can I not go back to move zero? Uh, I can't. Okay. Well, let's just go back to the starting position. Uh, in fact, I don't really need an analysis board to do this. Generally, I look at it this way, so I'll look at it this way. Um, against the Trompowski, I used to just play g6. Um, oh, in, in tournaments over the board, this is what I've played. And sure, I've gotten some rather clumsy positions out of it, but that's nothing new for me. And I don't expect in a one-hour game to out-nuance somebody in it. And this is kind of why I expect, this is in Blitz, I'm playing knight e4, is because I don't know it. Like, I think knight e4, there's bishop h4, and there's bishop f4. On bishop f4, I think I can do c5, but I'm not totally sure. And I've seen f3, and if f3, I think I can do this. But this is me really winging it. And I'm playing, in Blitz, I'm playing this really provocatively. Um, just because I want an opponent to defeat me and give me the impetus to actually study this. But so far, it appears that I at least know enough to survive the opening. Uh, thanks for the offer, but O1 isn't normally my shtick. Um, O1's kind of a little insane. Uh, I don't usually play it, but <laughs> thanks for the offer. Oh, any tips on C5? Uh, so maybe I start with the starting position and hit analysis? Okay, so yeah, I could get a, an analysis board and do whatever here. Let's do that. So is this what you're talking about, c5? c5 is sharp. I prefer d5. <laughs> oh, look at that. They say Zug Addict is good at finding bugs. Uh, that's cute. Um, anyway. So... You know, d5 is probably fine. I should probably just start playing d5 here, because at least um, there's not much for black to learn here. I assume because, like, if f3, I just move the knight, like, to d6 or something. This seems quite sane compared to the stuff I've been trying. And this is something I could play both in blitz and in slower games and still be okay doing it.
Uh, so any tips on C5, though? I find it kind of ironic that I'm being asked for advice, because, like, a minute ago I was saying I think F3 is the main move, and I think Queen A5 is playable against it, but I don't really know. I'm kind of making this up. I suppose I'd have to consult uh, Opening Authority to figure out what's playable here. Actually, I wonder... Can I do an advanced search and actually find the snow? No, there's snow searching by... Well, hang on. Uh, anybody know the opening code for Trompkowski? Anybody know the opening code for the Trompkowski opening? Uh... It would be nice if this were two separate fields, one with the opening code and one with the opening name, and they, they were just linked to each other. That way I could search by name instead of searching by opening code. Um, huh. Look, I found some openings. Hey, there's the bong cloud. People have actually played this. Uh, anyway, I'm getting way distracted here. I don't appear to know very much about the Trompowski. Uh, I don't even know its opening code, so I'm not sure how I'd manage to look it up here. ECO A45. All right. At least that might find it. Um, so A45 is the correct code. Um, that appears to include all Indian games, so I have to actually look at the moves here. Maybe you mean A54? Um, yeah, I'm not seeing Bishop G5 in any of these. Oh, here we are. Okay, so here's one. But actually, what I could do here is Trompowski. Okay. Hey, here's Stockfish playing it. Um, let's take a look at that. Oh, oh! You just don't play that. That uh, that looks so easy. My goodness, why have I ever gone for the mainline Trompowski when this? I mean, let me show you a point of comparison. This is what has me thinking here. Um, wait, can I? Where's the analysis button? Okay, I am in analysis mode. Oh, but shoot, I can't... Okay, let's just pretend this started 1e4, okay? Um, actually, let me flip this, too. So, this transposes to a Karokan. Um, and in the Karokan... Oh, how did this go? How, oh, how did this go? Um, positions where black ends up with that same pawn structure. I am drawing a total blank on this. Actually, wait, it's not the same pawn structure, but, um, so I guess we take, we got bishop f5, and then this. But no, no, I'm thinking of the caro where black just plays g6. And knight f6 or something. Um, but my point is that, supposing that we get this position where we just take and take, um, and then we got like knight f3 and e4, this looks very much like the caro that I've known familiar with. Um, hey, welcome. How do you say that anyway? MCJGP. Um, so, anyway, so yeah, Stockfish just plays d5 here, and then we got knight e4 after d5, and yeah, this is actually quite reasonable for black, as long as he doesn't mind getting his pawns doubled, but, like, here, I'm totally cool playing this position, too. There's nothing for black to fear, he has the bishop pair, uh, he's probably gonna get some more space in the future. This actually looks quite appealing. Um,
Oh, so I guess where this gets tricky, though, is suppose that the white doesn't immediately snap that. Like, if white plays knight f3 or something. We have to choose, eventually, which of these two pawns we're going to move to get our bishop out. Um, and I think this is something I'm okay with. Um, and there might be even better things that black can do other than just allowing this. But this resembles... Uh, this resembles a Karo that I've seen before. I don't know how... But somehow it does. Or maybe I'm thinking, yeah, G takes F6. Yeah, no, that's it, that's it. There's the G takes F6 in the Karo, and you have the open G file. But you have the doubled F pawns. Knight F3, uh, Knight E4 looks good. Yeah, yeah, Knight E4 looks good. This is getting outside of what... Um, might be my comfort zone, but so suppose we see bishop f4. I mean, this is still good for black. Um, it's kind of uh, confusing for me, but I think black's still totally good here. I'm not sure where this bishop's going. I'm not sure whether we're going to play e6 or not, and that might block this bishop. Um, and this knight could get undermined, too. But I don't see anything wrong with it. Like, maybe c5 here. But here we're venturing into territory I really don't know. Oh, seems good if bishop f4, okay. Yeah, I think f bishop f4, c5 is probably okay. Um... You're concerned about something else after knight e4. Not entirely sure what your concern is. Like, maybe bishop h4? I don't know. I've, I think I've... Wait, there's not g5 here. I was going to say bishop h4 is not a threat because of g5, but this knight stops g5 from happening. Um... But maybe your point is just that knight f3 might not be the best move for white. Um, yeah, so... I wouldn't say that it's busted either. It's given me a lot of confusion and grief over the board. Um, maybe maybe we go to like something like this. Might be okay, but there, this is a really tricky opening. Um, black has to play accurately to get equality. I think, actually, I'm not even sure that black gets equality out of this opening. Certainly wouldn't think that it's busted. Okay, so I had the weirdest thought just a second ago. Um, wait, how did I get here? So you know how um, there's this opening, the Budapest opening, or the Budapest defense. I wonder if e5, wait, no, e5 is not playable here. I was going to say, I wonder if this is any good. This is not good. Do not play this. Do not try this at home. This is why I'm experimenting right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think I think the Trompowski is definitely um, giving white an edge. It might be less of an edge than most uh, queen pawn openings, um, but I think white does get at least a small plus out of it. I haven't been able to find anything that proves otherwise. Yeah, it's one thing to say black scores better here, um, but I suspect that the player ratings have something to do with that. Okay. To say, I, I don't understand how 
Um, this is better for black, even from a statistics standpoint, because the statistics I saw seem to suggest that if the players are equally rated, white's doing better. Might not be as much of an advantage as other openings, but this is certainly something that gives white some advantage. Um, it's funny that I'm being consulted as kind of an authority here, because like, I keep restating that I think the main line is knight e4, and then I think bishop f4, but I'm not sure. And then I think c5, but I'm not entirely sure on that either. And then I think white plays f3, but I don't know. And then we have queen a5, but I don't know about that either. So really, my opening knowledge about the Trompowski ends about here. Um, I've experimented with a lot, but just what I know is just based on games that are so ridiculously dated that I would not trust myself to play this over the board in a tournament. Um, so I guess I'm kind of flattered that I was asked these questions, um, but you guys in the chat could probably answer these things better than I can right now. Openings isn't really my forte. Um, so with that, I might play a couple more games. Um, uh, after a few games, oh, queen a5, knight c3, knight f6. Interesting. Knight f6. I've always played knight d6, but knight f6 must be the book. Okay. Yeah, it leads to interesting play. I recommend you try it out. Um, there's no harm in trying it. Oh, okay. We've got an opponent on our hands. Um, All right, so I think we're going to see bishop takes, pawn takes. Sorry to keep playing the Berlin and Blitz, um, but like this is one of the things I've tried to master, this particular opening. All right, so yeah, king e8 is forced there. Um, all right, how am I going to get back into my line of choice? Well, no, I'm, if he plays knight c3, I think I could play a5. If he plays b3, I think a5 is playable. The most confusing move here is knight bd2. Not totally sure what's going on there. Alright, so we got knight c3. Um, I forget if h6 is the move here. I think it is. Yeah, so h6. Wait. Yeah, now this is the main line, I think. Okay, so now he's going to try to play onto knight on d4. Um, this is weird because I have no targets over here. I'm just going to grab some space. This can't be too bad. I don't want this knight to move with tempo. So I'm going to shuffle my knight over to g6. And here he's got what I call a redundant knight, where his knight on f3 can't occupy d4, because his knight's on, already on d4. Um, Then I play knight g6. He's got to play king h2 if he wants to play g4. Otherwise, this h file opens up, and we'll see that in a second. Oh, can I play... What can I play here? I can't allow pawn e6, can I? Um, it's getting kind of messy. 
allowing pawn e6 kind of looks bad. Um, maybe I throw in bishop b4 to e7. I don't want to play bishop e6 and then have him trade on e6. It just feels really uncomfortable. Somehow I want to get something more out of it. Um... Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I guess bishop e6 is the only way I can effectively stop this. Um, yeah, for those just joining us, though, I think I'm going to play a couple games and then I'm heading out. So, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Uh, I'd prefer to stop knight d4 if I could. Actually, I could play king f7, and then rook c8, and then if he's like drops his rook on d7, I'm a-okay with that. I don't know if I should encourage that, though. Really, I should just be going, moving forward on the queen side. Oh, the other thing. Here, here's a rook lift. Rook a5 and then take the e-pawn. So he can't get his rook to d7 just yet. And so to try to get a tempo... And I'm probably going to lose the game for just trying to win this one tempo, but um, I want to try to get my rook to an effective square. <laughs> oh, wow. We've got quite a passion for the classical Dutch here. Now, if I remember correctly, um, one famous grandmaster, and I won't name any names... Played the classical Dutch, or attempted to play the Leningrad Dutch recently, uh, within the last year, uh, in, in a pretty high-profile tournament, and it didn't go so well. Yeah, the Dutch, I think, is an interesting opening. I don't know that it works. Also, for what we'd want to know about the Grinfeld, honestly, it'd be cool to know everything about it. But that's quite a lot to know. Alright, so here we got rook d4. I could exchange my bishop for his bishop. I actually prefer his bishop to mine. Um, but I don't need to initiate an exchange just to... Oh, he's trying to double rooks. Duh, that's the point. What can I do to frustrate that? Yeah, so I can kick his rook off there. If he plays rook g4... Oh no. I guess if he plays rook g4, I have to have, be prepared to move my knight somewhere. Or guard it. Um... Regardless, I don't like this bishop. I think it's okay if I trade for his bishop. I think my position does hold together. Yeah, castling's not legal here. 
um, because I've already moved my king twice. All right, so I'm going to exchange that. And then bring my other rook into the game. It's hard to call his moves mistakes because he's rated way higher than I am. Um, so I have to be, I always have to temper things when I'm criticizing somebody who probably sees more than I do. This is the point. So I wanted to play my rook to a5. And sure, let's take the open file. I think this is A-OK -okay for black. Maybe I even... I don't know. Maybe I play A3 at some point. Maybe Rook B5. Yeah, let's play Rook B5 and see what he does. Now if I could get my king, if I could advance my king, that would be awesome. Alright, so I'm practically hanging material here. Um... This is really precarious. All right, so what do I do? When I'm hanging one pawn, why not hang two, right? All right, I didn't expect that, but I don't have much time to calculate what's going on. All right. I think I have to take that. Oh. Oh, this is getting complicated. Uh, this is getting complicated. Certainly mistakes were made. Yeah, and for white, this is winning so many different ways, but I'm just playing this out both to test if white knows how to do it and to see if I can somehow magic my way out of it. Okay. So I have to make a choice here. 
here I choose that I'm going to just push my pawn. Okay, that compels me to play this. And there we go. That was well played. Okay, so what happened this game? Um, I'm kind of curious. Clearly I missed something. Uh, again, this is a blitz game, so I'm supposed to miss things, but I think this is lost, this is lost, this is lost, this is lost. Um, uh, this is probably lost. This might be kind of sort of drawish, but who wants to want to play that? So knight takes knight was a bad practical decision. Probably objectively bad as well. Um, C4 was played out of panic because I didn't see anything else here. Wait, king b4 is likely a draw? Oh, because there's the, none of that check business. I don't know. Um, so we'll take a look, but I'm really skeptical here. How could this draw? I can't move my king over to the C file, so there's this check and then this check. Oh wait. I was going to say there's got to be some fork check thing going on, but that's not the case. Alright, uh, let's start, try this. So, if I go back a rank, he's going to check and fork me this way. Um, yeah, so I have to go up a rank. Um, how is there not some fork check that just wins this immediately? I'm also trying to keep my king on light colored squares so there's no fork that protects the f pawn. But, um, yeah, so the f pawn's protected. Again, there's this fork on f4, so I have to advance my king again. And now his king just goes and mops up my pawns. So, I, I don't think this king b4 was good enough, because, um, his king is way closer to the pawns than mine is, and there's all kinds of queen forks that allow his king to mop up my pawns first. Yeah, if there were just a couple fewer pawns here, let's see how many pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, once three pawns get taken off, uh, then this is something that would appear in most, if not all, table bases. But this is something that isn't in a table base. Uh, uh, okay. Can I solve this, though, while Stockfish is still thinking? Like, you see Stockfish thinking there, right? So that's why I hesitate on this one for so long, is because there's actually stuff to figure out here. Um, so, I think Queen E4 is probably most precise, intending that if, like, King E3... Well, no... King c3 is bad for other reasons, but if queen e4, if king uh, b3, hang on, we're about to get our analysis. Okay. They'll probably say king, c4, king b4 was better, but who knows. Okay, the best move is, in fact, king b4. And we got this promotion, this promotion, queen b7 check. Why queen b7? That makes no sense. Okay, but let's let's roll with this for a little bit. So king b2, it says is best. So point number one. Okay, so king a2 is illegal. Um, king to b3, and then there's queen e3 check. And then the king just takes both of these pawns and then promotes. So... 
Like, for example, takes, takes, king there, king here, king there. In fact, this is even simpler, because the e-pawn just wins. Um, so, um, so, yeah, king b2 is in fact best, because all the other moves are terrible. But king b2 is also losing, um, because white just takes this pawn with check. And now white's up two pawns. Uh, king b3 is black's best move, because again, he can't step over to the c-file because of the skewer. So, king b3, queen f7, check, defends the f-pawn. Um, and your guess is as good as mine as to why queen a6 and queen b7 are good, but this is very, very good for white. Almost certainly winning. King b4 is better than king d4, but king b4 isn't good enough to save this either, because the evaluation, the evaluation is still plus 4. Like, it's a huge advantage for white. Not as huge as, like, what happened in the game. Because what happened in the game is this check, and then this is just game over. But four-point advantage is pretty decisive. Um, so for here's the evaluation graph right down here. Um, what's the last point where... This might have been the last point where I could salvage it. Yeah, I was saying this looked quite discouraging. Uh, possibly drawn if I don't play king d6, and king d6 just it forces the rooks to come off the board, and that's bad for me. But uh, I said this is a pretty miserable position for black anyway. Um, black would have to find this move, and then play that, and then find this, and then play king e7, and then, like... These are all computer moves that are really easy for a computer to find. For a human to find this in the context of a blitz game, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so let's back up a little bit. So king e1, c5. Oh yeah, this is the other thing I pointed out. So even before we looked at Stockfish, I said I only played c5 because I didn't see anything here. Stockfish isn't giving me an alternative, so... Um, I guess there's nothing that's clearly best, but just c5 is in general a bad move. Yeah, king b4 is the best try. Um, I wouldn't say, as you said earlier, that it's likely a draw, but it's definitely uh, my best try. Um, here I was saying that my c5 move, I just played because I didn't see any other moves to play. Uh, but I didn't have a good feeling about this either. I was just in time pressure, and I'm not sure what I should do. Um, clearly white intends to bring the rook over and start trading. Really hard to do anything about that without allowing the white king into the middle of the board. And so I figured, well, what I need to do is bring my king to the middle of the board too. Well, so what if the rooks get traded? Um, well, it turns out that wasn't a good idea, but what do I do? What can I do? I guess just bringing my rook to d5 in the first place is a bad idea, because it doesn't stop this uh, king from entering. Uh, so here I'd need to find rook c3. Oh, the point is rook a3. Rook a3 makes things challenging. So... Um, yeah, that that's the idea, is that say we got king e1, and I play rook a3, and now it's kind of hard for white to defend that, so he could either play c3 or c4, but if he plays c4, I step back here, and what's he doing? Um, and yeah, he could defend the c-pawn, but then I go back here and hit the a-pawn, and then he goes back, and then I hit the c-pawn again. Um, so yeah, this would have been cool. This would have been playable for black. Something hangs a knight. Oh, yeah, okay. So there, yeah, there's another point that's kind of less uh, subtle. And that's that king e1 loses the knight. Because rook c3 hits the knight. Like, I see this whole convoluted rook a3, rook takes pawn thing, but I missed the fact that 
Uh, I'm just hitting the knight. Uh, so, why knight e1, though? I don't get it. Like, why not knight d4? There's got to be a reason. I guess knight d4, I just play pawn c5. So, whatever. Knight e1, c5 anyway. And, yeah, I just advance my king. So we see how before that, like, if king f1, my, the evaluation of this on king f1, the evaluation of this after king f1 is just slight advantage for black. But only if I find this rook c3 move, deflecting the knight, and once the knight moves away, and then I find a way to enter my king in and harass this e-pawn. Uh, so this continues check. Okay, so this cuts off the king. So there's no king d5. But still, this is good for black. Yeah, like I said, um, what time is it? I think it's time that, yeah, it's about time that I start wrapping this up. Um, so let me go back. So this is the Berlin defense. Um, this is all book, book, book. Knight ED4. This confused me a lot, because uh, this is not book. Oh, and I, Stockfish thinks I should just take it. And then I should just develop and take that? Um, okay, so b6, bishop e6, e3, king e7. I don't believe f3, but everything else up to here seems pretty logical. And black's objective in the Berlin defense is to establish equality and then press for more. So, yeah, I don't know that taking the knight on d4 is something we should be doing. Like, bishop takes d4 looks dubious to me. Stockfish says it's okay, but Stockfish thinks that this whole opening's bad for black. And Grandmasters show that this isn't as bad as it looks. So, you know what? Stockfish could be critical of my knight e7, but I think that... Before I played it, so here we have, this is plus 0.5 to white. This is plus 0.6 to white. I think that this is perfectly playable for black, if not the best move. I think Stockfish is kind of high, but I don't know. All right, well, thank you so much. I appreciate all the constructive feedback. Um, uh, been a lot of fun here. Let me just quickly get through the remainder of the moves, and I'll be on my way as well. So we got h3, knight g6, rook e1. Again, moving the same piece, well, three times in the opening. Um, Stockfish doesn't like this move, but I don't care, because it seems okay. And a4, I don't know about a4, but a4 is kind of clever. Bishop c5. Oh, yeah, here, here's where I had to figure this out. I wanted to play this. I think this is the, my last point about the game, is that I wanted to play king f7. I was concerned about rook d7. I had planned not that rook to c8. I had planned this rook to c8. And then if bishop c5, I had intended rook d8. Um... And then what had I planned here? I don't know. I think that's the extent of what I had figured out. That this looks okay for black. Actually, it's back up one. I looked at rook d8. And, uh, yeah, and then bishop c5 here. Rook takes, rook takes. And I felt that black was hanging in here, but I wanted something even better for black. So this is why I discarded the idea of this particular variation. Um, the stockfish tells me that I shouldn't have given up so quickly. I should have considered this rook c8. And I guess the point is that uh, the rook on d7 isn't as good as this rook going to a5 and taking out the e-pawn. That's interesting. So then white brings his other rook out. We hit this rook. Oh, wow. 
Okay, so we play knight f8. That's really weird. Um, Doctor still thinks white's better here. Like, it evaluates this position as plus 0.4. But, um, I think this is okay for black, if not better. I don't know about knight f8. Yeah, this is your homework assignment, guys. Solve this position. Do it so I don't have to. Yeah, I'm thinking rook a5. And g3, and then rook d5. But have fun with this one. Um, thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Merry Kwanzaa. Whatever you want to celebrate. Um, hope you've got some resolutions. Hope you're improving at chess. Or at least enjoying it. And I'll see you around next time.